Well, it's that time of the year again, where I'm sure you're seeing a bunch of the best of 2023 videos. And we've been working on a bunch too. I was working on one for air coolers. And as usual, every single year, there's a bunch of companies at this time that say, oh, hold on a second, guys, we've got one more thing. And that's where the A620 and A720 coolers from ID Cooling come into things. Because basically these things are being set up to turn the entire air cooling market on its head, not just from a performance perspective, but also from a pricing perspective. Now, ID Cooling shouldn't be a new name to anybody here. And now, instead of sticking to the budget-focused market, they're going after the deep cools, be quiets, and knock tools of the world. The frozen A620 targets coolers like the Deep Cool AK620 and Thermalright Phantom Spirit, while the much bigger frozen A720 is supposed to hit up near D15 territory, while costing a whole lot less. So basically a pretty big step up from where the 224 XT played. And you know what else is a big step up? This case from Antec. The really capable Performance 1FT is now available in white. The perfect complement to matching or contrasting hardware with all the same great features. Four thick fans deliver proper airflow for the 40 series and below. There's a temperature display so you know when things get hot. Support for dual 360s at the same time, 10 gigabits per second type C and a whole lot of character with that front grille, dual TGs, cable covers to hide the mess, and Antec is really turning things around. Pick your own color and enjoy this awesome full tower. So I need to kick things off with the Frozen A620 because if you look at it, there is very, very little separating this cooler from the AK620 from Deepcool. This, by all intents and purposes here, looks like a literal clone of what Deepcool did with their cooler. But there are a couple things going on underneath the hood that make it quite a bit different. So both have dual 120 millimeter fans, two cooling towers, six heat pipes, a solid nickel plated copper base, and very, very similar dimensions. Though the Frozen does save a couple of millimeters. They both even have plastic top plates for that nicely finished look, though the Frozen series is quite a bit cheaper. There are also two options here, a matte black color or a white cooler equipped with RGB that costs a few bucks more. The A620 also uses fluid dynamic bearing fans, so their noise profiles should be much more pleasant than the AK620s. Memory compatibility, well, that's a bit of a challenge, but it's no different from most other dual tower heatsinks, since its frontmost fan overhangs one of the motherboard's primary memory slots. There's about 36 millimeters of clearance under there, so most DRAM kits with low profile heatsinks should fit. But if you have taller modules, that fan's gonna have to come up a bit higher. That'll mess with the A620's clean looks and increase its height by a bit. Otherwise though, this is a compact cooler that doesn't have any red flags when it comes to motherboard interference. The A620 is also bound to be a lot more broadly available than some of the other top tier coolers we've tested, at least in areas of the world that typically don't have access to certain brands. I mean, I've heard horror stories about trying to find Thermalright and Deepcool products in places like India and South America. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have this thing. This is the Frozen A720, and it is basically playing in a completely different league than the A620. As a matter of fact, it really doesn't have all that many direct competitors. Maybe like the D15 and Silver Arrow IBE Extreme that we haven't looked at yet. But I mean, look at this thing. This thing is like a supersized A620 with dual 140 millimeter fans. And it's also taller, wider, and longer. This thing is massive, but that's to be expected since it's meant to be ID Cooling's flagship heatsink. Don't let the A720 specs fool you either. A height of 163 millimeters will never happen since those larger fans also have a pretty negative effect on your memory options. With just 28 millimeters of clearance, the front fan will need to be moved upwards even if you're using bare modules. Meanwhile, most other memory will cause the front fan to go even higher and higher, which will definitely definitely impact compatibility with some cases. To avoid this, some manufacturers like Thermal Wright with their Frost Commander and Frost Spirit have actually gone with a hybrid setup for their fans. So a 120 millimeter in the front and a middle 140 millimeter fan. But I'm guessing with this thing, ID Cooling, they just wanted to go 
full hog and get the best possible performance. So other than the larger fin arrays, there's a total of seven heat pipes and a slightly extended base when compared to its smaller brother. On the positive side, ID Cooling has one of the best installation kits we've seen in a while. It's straightforward, the instructions are clear, there's a pre-installed universal crossbar, and I absolutely love the color-coded hardware. Well done. But one of the biggest questions here has to be the quality of the fans that ID Cooling is using on both of these coolers. Did they cheap out? Because even though we didn't experience any issues whatsoever with our AK620 samples, a lot of people who own this cooler report that at certain RPM ranges, this thing makes an absolute racket. So let's take a listen to the fans that ID Cooling is using to see if there's any red flags. So given the fact that both of these are more budget-friendly options, I'm going to take that as a complete pass. They aren't making any weird noises at any of the critical RPM levels, and we actually have two samples of each. So with that sample cross-section, they seem to be very, very well-behaved. But if you want to replace the fans on these, absolutely no problem, because guess what? ID Cooling has your basic clip mount system, unlike what Be Quiet and Deep Cool is doing in some situations. So bravo on that one. Yet one thing I'd want to emphasize here is to absolutely positively avoid using your motherboard's auto fan speed setting since both of these coolers can get really, really loud when they're running at close to full speed. There's something else you need to check out about these coolers and that is how ID Cooling has almost hyper-optimized them for Intel 13th and 14th gen CPUs. The way pressure is applied lines up directly with the CPU die instead of it being center focused or completely even pressure across the entire IHS. When you add the fact that all of both coolers heat pipes make direct contact with the processor with the A720's outer heat pipes having partial coverage, well in our experience this is a recipe for success. With that in mind, let's head to Intel testing starting at 180 watts, which is meant to simulate a more entry-level CPU from the 13th and 14th gen processors. And then adding all of our top tier air coolers followed by the A620, and its performance is surprisingly good by managing to beat the AK620 by a pretty wide margin, while also staying ahead of other bigger coolers like the Frost Commander, Dark Rock Pro 5, and Assassin 4. It's also fundamentally tied with two of the best price to performance options we've ever tested, the Peerless Assassin and Phantom Spirit 120SE. The A720, well that's on a whole other level. At lower noise levels, it's in a tie with Thermalrite's Frost Spirit V3 for the title of the best air cooler we've ever tested. So yes, at this thermal output, it narrowly beats the D15 too, while being a good $50 cheaper. At 253 watts, which is Intel's technical limit for this processor, the A620 does even better than at a lower wattage by splitting the difference between the Phantom Spirit and Peerless Assassin at lower noise levels, after which it ended up matching the Phantom Spirit. The Frozen A720 also blew my expectations right out of the water by even pulling away from the Frost Spirit and becoming, by a narrow lead at least, the best cooler we've tested so far. But I need to mention again, these two can get very loud if you let them, so try to stay within their sweet spots. 
And look, even amazing results won't save coolers from Intel's no limit setting. So let's drill down into the clock speeds to see which are getting the best results. And before we drop the ID cooling heat sinks into here, it's pretty obvious this chart is dominated by the Frost Spirit, Phantom Spirit, D15, and to a lesser extent, the Fuma 3 and Peerless Assassin. The A620 might start out a bit slow, but it really hits its stride at 38 decibels and beyond, while the A720 does the same thing and eventually matches the Phantom Spirit. It actually hits the highest all-core frequency we've ever been able to achieve from an air cooler. Gaming, well, it needs a little bit of an explanation here because our trusty RTX 3090 finally gave up the ghost and we were forced to use an RTX 4080. That leads to less heat buildup, so all the temperatures have gone by a fair amount and we had to do every single one of these tests over again. Anyways, the frozen coolers both get very, very good results right across the board. They're not the best, but anything under 75 degrees makes basically no difference to performance anyways. Intel, well, that's the easy part for most of the coolers, but we don't stop there. We also test on AM5, and that we've seen again and again is a whole other ball game. That is mostly because of the way that AMD design their chips, which absolutely trips up every single cooler that we've seen so far. And starting with the 7600X, well, the A620 essentially matches the offset mounted U12A and beats the Dark Rock Elite and Fuma 3 at lower RPM levels. It's also only two to three degrees behind the best coolers here. Meanwhile, there's obviously a bottleneck with the A720 since it gets the exact same performance as its little brother. But then again, this isn't unprecedented since we've seen huge coolers struggle at lower heat loads on newer Ryzen processors. On a Ryzen 7 7700X, the frozen A620 lines up pretty much where it did on the 7600X, which means if you can get them for under 50 bucks, the Thermalright Peerless Assassin and Phantom Spirit offer better bang for buck, but I'd still pick this over the AK620 since it's a good $15 less and only loses by two to three degrees. Meanwhile, the A720 pulls ahead here and ends up competing pretty well with other high-end air coolers like the Frost Commander and much more expensive Assassin 4, though it does start to lag behind at higher noise levels. And the 7950X, well, we all know it's almost impossible to keep under its 95 degree maximum temperature. The A620 hits that temperature right up until 40 decibels, and then it ties the Dark Rock Elite and Fuma 3 while losing by about a degree to the AK620, Assassin 4, and even the offset mounted D15. That goes to show you just how close all these heat sinks are. The A720, well, it puts in some impressive results by tying the D15. Though like with every other cooler we've tested to this point, it's impossible to match whatever secret sauce Thermalright found for their newest coolers on AM5. And remember, we're putting these two ID cooling heat sinks up against the best of the best. There's another half dozen high-end coolers that didn't even make it into this chart. Gaming doesn't really put much of a load on any of these coolers, even on a hot running 7700X. And for their respective prices, the ID cooling heat sinks post good results, though they aren't anything spectacular. Especially when you consider the huge A720 gets beaten by less expensive, more compact alternatives like the Deep Cool AK620, Peerless Assassin, and Phantom Spirit. Now I'm sure at this point in time you're just screaming at your screen, why did ID Cooling not include an offset mounting kit? We've seen these things have huge benefits on Noctua coolers in the past. Well, ID Cooling, they responded to my question about it and they said, yeah, we tried it. It basically had no net positive benefits on temperatures and including it would have just driven up the cost of these coolers. They also, they also sent me their prototype offset mounting kit to try for myself. So that's exactly what we did. And they were right. For the most part, the offset kit didn't have any perceptible impact on any of the processors. Supposedly, this is due to the way contact is applied through ID Cooling's base. Offset kits have the best results on coolers with a slightly convex base that puts more pressure on a center point, like Noctua has. ID Cooling, on the other hand, well, their target was a completely flat base, so an offset kit leads to negligible benefits versus the added cost. And I think all of this points towards why it is so critical that we test on two separate modern platforms. Because if we had tested on just AMD, AM5, well, these coolers would have been very, very good options. On the other hand, if we would have tested on only 13th or 14th gen Intel CPUs, their, their, their results are absolutely mind blowing. So the conclusion is sort of in between those two points. These are absolutely amazing coolers that have 
an incredible price to performance ratio. I mean, sure, they aren't chart toppers on AM5, but their results are still competitive, most of the time running with alternatives that tend to cost a whole lot more. And when you add a super well-designed mounting kit, standard non-proprietary fans, and a sleek no-nonsense design, it's hard to find any glaring flaws here. And I can't emphasize this enough. Yes, Thermal Right is still racking up wins in the background, but having a budget-friendly alternative to the Peerless Assassin, Phantom Spirit, and Frost Spirit is a huge deal, especially for regions that struggle to get fair pricing on Thermal Right coolers. So overall, good job ID Cooling for bucking some of the trends that we're starting to see in the air cooling market. And that is proprietary fans, crappy mounting, and extremely, extremely high prices. So anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.